Hey, AP Physics students, welcome in for another progress check from AP Classroom. This is number three, unit one, and we're taking a look at an experimental design FRQ. Let's get into it. So we've got a small sphere, a stopwatch, and a meter stick, and we're being asked to take measurements to create a graph so we can determine the acceleration due to gravity. Now we need to write a procedure that's going to tell us how to collect data and then we're using that data to determine the acceleration of gravity and importantly, very importantly, they want us to include any necessary steps to reduce experimental uncertainty. So I've already written a procedure. I want to show you what AP wants step by step. Let's go over to that page right now. Okay, so let's take a look. We've got step one, hold the sphere at the top of the meter stick, 100 centimeters above the ground. And we want to hold that meter stick vertically. Don't know if you have to say that, but let's play it safe and say it. Then we're going to use a stopwatch to time the spheres drop to the ground. And if we just did this once, we would not be reducing experimental uncertainty. So step three, do this multiple times and record. Take the average of these times and I'm making sure they understand this will reduce the experimental uncertainty. Now that's essentially the procedure, just steps one through three, but that's for one height. And we wanna do this for multiple heights so we have enough data for a graph. So step four is repeat step or steps one through three for different drop heights, each successive drop height 10 centimeters or less. And then I stated some sample heights so the grader can see those. All right, so that's the procedure. Let's take a look at part B. Now part B is gonna ask us how to take the data we get from something like this, and then graph it. Okay, so part B. What I would do here first is I would state what I'm gonna put on the graph and I'd even show a little sample of that graph. Okay, so I'm gonna say horizontal axis and vertical axis. And I'll even draw a little sample of it right over here. Now, what am I definitely gonna put on this horizontal axis? Well, it would be time. But if I just put time and I put displacement here, then I would get a graph that looked like a curve. It would be exponential. And that is not a graph where we can get a singular slope and then find the acceleration of gravity. So we need to be a little more intelligent than that, right? So we need to put definitely this on the vertical axis, displacement. You could just write the variable. You don't have to actually write the word displacement in meters. And so right here, I'll put delta x in meters. And over here, I'm going to put time squared, not just time. Now, here's the reason why. So I'll put time squared. because now you're gonna get a graph that looks like this. If these are our plotted points and we drew our line of best fit right through the center, we would have a straight line. Here's your proof of that. Delta X equals V naught T plus one half A, the acceleration of gravity T squared, where V naught equals zero meters per second. Okay, so I'm gonna cross that out. And I'm going to look at this relationship and I'm going to say, look at that. Delta X equals one half a T squared. I'm going to divide both sides by T squared. I'm going to end up with Delta X over T squared equals one half a. Now I'm going to tell the grader slope is Delta X over T squared is right is one half a. So here's where I like these types of FRQs because you can show some math and then use some narrative to further explain what you're getting at. So right here I'm going to say calculate slope and set equal to one half A. And then I'll show the equation I'm talking about. Now I would multiply both sides by two. 
and your acceleration is two times the calculated slope that you found. So just looking at this, if I'm a grader, I'm seeing that the student clearly understands that they need to square time, and it's all based on this equation right here, and that when I rearrange this equation, I am getting a rise over a run, delta x over t squared, that would be equal to something that has the acceleration of gravity. And you probably want to state somewhere that that is the acceleration of gravity. So part B is done. I would box this. Okay, let's take a look at part C. Another group of students is given a cart on an inclined track. And at the end of the track is a motion sensor and it's recording velocity of the cart as a function of time. And you can see the table right there. There's your velocities, there's your times. The students correctly determine that the relationship between velocity and time is given by V equals G sine theta times T. The students create a graph with T plotted on the horizontal axis. So they're already telling you that on the graph in the second part of this section, they're going to put time. What are we going to put on the vertical axis? That's what they're asking in C1. Indicate which measured or calculated quantity could be plotted on the vertical axis to yield a linear graph whose slope can be used to determine an experimental value for the angle of the track. And they're telling us we can use these columns if we want to do some variation of velocity or some variation of time. And you can certainly do that, but I'm just going to use velocity. So I'm answering C1 right now. I would just put V here, velocity, and I'll show you in C2 why that is. All right, here's C2, and we've got a graph. And as stated before, I'm going to put velocity on this axis in meters per second. And I'm going to plot the information from up here on that graph. And from that information, I should get a straight line, a linear slope, where I can then calculate theta, the angle of the inclined plane. Okay, we're on C2, and here's our graph. On the vertical axis, we have velocity in meters per second, and on the horizontal axis, we have time in seconds. They told us that one, we chose that one. There's the points we have to plot, and the issue is I need to scale this graph. Now, this graph has 30 boxes if you count it on the original handout. What's our top value of velocity? It would be 5. So I would take 5, divide it by 30, and I would get 0.16 repeats. Now, you don't want to count by 0.16666666, right? That'd be ridiculous because it's not an easy number to count by. But that's what this answer means. It means that every box would be worth 0.16 repeat. Let's round up to 0.2. So that's what I tell students to do. We're going to round up to the next best number. So if this is 0.2 and that's 0.4 and this is 0.6, you see where this is going and this is 0.8, this would be 1.0. So wouldn't you agree this would be 2.0 and this would be 3.0 and 4.0? And I'm going to stop there because you can see we don't need to go to that last hash mark up there, which would be 6.0. It's okay if you don't use the whole graph, but you want to use most of it. So let's plot these points. I've got 0.9 seconds, 0.9 seconds right here. And I've got what? I've got five. So There's my first plotted point. My next one is 0.7 right here, 0.7 and 3.7. So that'd be 3.6, 3.7, somewhere right here. There's my next plotted point. Next one, I have 0.5. Then I have 3.0, that's gonna be easy enough. Okay, 0.3 and 1.7 right there and finally we're going to do 0.1 and 1. okay so there's our plotted points and a question i get all the time from students is should i use zero zero well if i use zero zero you can see that we would not really be obeying this trend at all, right? And it, in fact, it looks more linear to be right here. And so that's what you should do. Now you can ask yourself sometimes with the experiment, does zero, zero make sense as a plotted point? And sometimes it does. 
But here I'm going to say let's avoid using 0, 0 because the data set looks like we have a y-intercept that's above 0. So with these types of graphs, you want to make sure you have the same number of dots below as you do above. And we'll try that out and see what we got. And you can see it's not the best. It's not the best because I don't have a clear ruler. So what I'm going to do is get another color, and I'm going to go ahead and kick it up a little higher. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. In fact, it's good to use a pencil a lot of times for this type of thing. So that blue line looks a lot better than the green line, if you can see the color. Now, the next thing that I see students need help with is you cannot just use these data points to calculate the slope. Can't do that, all right? And by the way, C2 is done. So let's keep going, though, because we know we want to find the slope. And from the slope, we want to find the angle of the inclined plane. So what we're looking for is clear intersection points on the graph paper with our blue line. So I can pick any two where I have a clear intersection on the graph paper. And there's one, and I'd say another one is right about there, I guess. So those points right there that I chose. And I'm going to go ahead and drop a line and then create a line going over. And this would be my rise, and this is my run. Now you can certainly find the coordinates of this and calculate it that way. And that's probably what they want you to do. This would be x2, y2. So let's go ahead and figure that out. So before I can find my x2, I have to realize that each one of these boxes is worth 0.04. And the way I determine that is I know this space is 0 0.2. 0 0.2 divided by 5 is 0.04. Now I'm three boxes past 0.2, so I'm going to say times 3 and then plus 0.2, and I'm going to realize that this is 0.32. So this x2 is 0.32. Now y2 is easier to find. We can see that that's simply 2, 0.0. Now if I'm looking at this one, this will be my x1, x1 and my y1. So looking at my x1, I'm four boxes in, and so I'd say four times 0.04, and I'd get 0.16. So this would be 0.16 right here. Let's see if I can repurpose that. There we go. And my Y1 would simply be 1.2, like that. All right, so let's calculate our slope. We know that slope is going to be rise over run. And rise over run is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. y2 is 2.0 minus 1.2, all divided by 0.32 minus 0.16. Now you probably want to put units in here. So you could put meters per second minus meters per second over seconds minus seconds. Let's just keep going though. 2 minus 1.2 divided by open parentheses 0.32 minus 0.16. And we get 5. That's nice. That's a nice number. But what is my unit? It's really important we see our unit. And my unit would be meters per second each second. Okay, so that makes sense because it's velocity versus time. So that would be meters per second squared. Done. Thank goodness. Let's get over to see what the rest of this question is all about. Okay, so we're back at our question, and we've done C1, we've done C2, and we've done C3. Draw a best fit line for the graph determined in part C2. Now D, we already started on, which is good. Calculate an experimental value for theta using your line of best fit you drew in figure one. So I'm going to go back over to the paper and show you how we're going to get theta from what I just created.
Okay, so back to our paper. We found a slope that's five meters per second squared. That was found by doing a rise of velocity with respect to time. At the beginning of C, the student said V is equal to G sine theta times T. So I'm going to make this thing look like this by dividing both sides by T. Remember, the whole thing we're trying to do right now is find that theta. So if I say V over T equals G sine theta, and the slope, which is 5, is also equal to V over T, then isn't this equal to this? You follow? So V over T is 5. V over T is G sine theta. Let's write 5 equals G sine theta. Again, leave units in when you're doing this in class. Divide both sides by G. Take the inverse sine, and let's be done with this. Theta is equal to the inverse sine of 5 over, and just to keep things easy, I'm going to throw a 10 in there. You can put 9.8, that's fine. And I'm going to do inverse sine of a half, right? Inverse sine of a half gives me an angle of 30 degrees. Now that sounds pretty reasonable, and that seems like an angle that we'd actually use in a laboratory setting. There you go, all done. Please like, please subscribe, please ring the bell because I'm rolling out more of these questions. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.